I find myself in Borden in Hampshire emptying a man's dishwasher because he took this picture. I hope you'll agree it's absolutely brilliant. I was so impressed with it that I sent a message to the guy who uploaded it saying how did you do it and he promptly uploaded this one. And I think you ought to say hello, Nick. Say hello. Hello. This is Nick Jeffrey. He took the oil on water shot, which I thought was. Oh, dish, please. Oh, dish. There we go. Yeah, I believe. Thank you. Welcome. He took the uh, oil on water shot, which you were just looking at, which I think is absolutely brilliant. And we've said all along we wanted you guys to become involved, so we got in touch with Nick, and Nick said, "Yeah, come on down. I'll show you how you did it." So, come on then, Nick. How did you do right. it? How do we begin? Easy. Right here, not space. Yeah. So, shot on the kitchen floor, because I love this sort of stuff. So you didn't use any fancy equipment? Just what I can grab up, really. Picture I'm frames like, and bits and pieces. Extends you with money. Yeah, so, aren't we all? What we need here is... So, just to get that absolutely straight, you didn't buy any special equipment. No, this is stuff you rummaged around in the cupboards That's and right. thought, how am I going to go about this? Yeah, it's easily done. That's it. So, as he destroys a picture frame, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, don't break it. Okay, so we need a piece of glass. So what, where does the piece of gla glass go? What does that do? What's that it job? It has to be raised above the floor. Yeah. So to raise the <coughs> floor, I'm going to use <laughs> diet coke cans as table legs. Brilliant. Gives a little stamp. Oh, I've got you. See, one on each so, corner? Yep. Yeah. Yes, mate. So we want to... Like that. So, and one there. Yeah, this is what I love, all this kind of, you know, rummage around in the cupboard because everybody thinks you have to spend a fortune on don't. buying specialist studio equipment and things like that. That's right. And of course this is a great project for a rainy day, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, this is why I love doing photography like this. Rainy day, can't get outside, don't get your camera wet. Yeah. Want to do something inside? So yeah. This is what I'm going to do. I think it's brilliant. Okay, right, next. So, want some bit of colour. Just ordinary cards, you can even save yourself more money. Yeah. Get some A4 card, print them out yourself. Have you a printer at home? Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we're going to use some nice old colours. You're yeah, actually going to go for. So, they're going to sit underneath at the bottom here, That's like right. this. Just place them in. Do you want to, yeah, do you want to lift that up? Do you want me to lift that and then you can place it where you want it? Okay, yeah. That there would do. Okay. So why are you using two different coloured pieces of card? Brings out the colour on the finish shot. Yeah. Lovely two bold colours. I've it's, got you. Yeah. Use a warm colour, no good. So I'm get, so you're gonna <coughs> use this as a light table. Indeed. And we're gonna put some on here and you're gonna shoot down through it That's and right. the, this will then reflect up through. That's right. Okay, next step. Next step is for its dish. Yep. Over the middle like that. I got you. And looking down through you can see you already see Yeah, where the different coloured pieces right. of card are going on. Next thing is one table lamp. Studio lighting. Studio. This is so great, just a little bit of you know, inventiveness and a bit of thought. You can come up with so many brilliant ideas. Have that just to shine when you cut the card. Gotcha. It'll be nice and bright then after the shot. Yeah. Right. What we need next is oil and water. Pour water in Spirex dish. Because translucent things as well, <clears throat> what Nick's effectively doing here is backlighting the shot. The light from the table lamp is bouncing off the coloured paper and reflecting back up through the bowl. Whenever you backlight something that's translucent, it really looks great. It brings up all the colour, the texture, right. and if you shine light down onto it, it just reflects back again, doesn't it? Yeah. So now this is a fun part. Feel like Jamie Oliver now. <laughs> you drizzling. I'm just drizzle. Just, just drizzle, baby. Drizzle. You're gonna get your fingers in there and munge it up a bit. <laughs> right. Okay. So that's basically it. 
yeah. all the setup. Yeah. So what I've got to do now is get to my tripod and camera. So what sort of camera are you it's using? It's a Canon 350. Okay. So again, it's not like you're, you're using something super special, no, there's no, no kind of... No special. Um, not meant to diss your camera <laughs> anyway, you know, but it's like... I have seen shots similar to this where they've actually used macro lenses. Yeah. Unfortunately, it can be out of people's price range. Yeah. But I'm just using a 28 to 105 mil lens. Okay, and this is a, a is standard Canon, is it a Canon lens? Yes, Canon lens, standard camera lens. Okay. You have to very carefully just put your tripod in there. Yeah. Hopefully. Nice. Ball head on the tripod too. Ball heads are brilliant. They're just so easy, aren't That's they? Right. Just fix it roughly in the middle of our X dish. I've got enough room now to yep. zoom in and out with the lens. And so with a, even with a bog standard 28 to 105 millimeter lens, you can still focus in this kind of close. That's right. Excellent. And I guess well, if you couldn't, if you couldn't, if your camera won't focus in quite that close, you could always use something like a close-up filter. We'll just stack it a bit higher. That's right. And then just kind just of in. crop into it a bit afterwards, couldn't That's you, right. I suppose? Right. Okay. Let's set up. Right, so we're ready to take the shot. Quite fascinating, actually. So, how are you using your camera? Are you using it on a particular mode, or are you? I like to use manual mode. Yeah. And also manual focus. Yeah. Because obviously, you don't want to zoom in, start searching around with the slight movement. So. Yeah, of course, because the autofocus could also get itself a bit confused, That's I suppose, right. and not knowing. Searching all the time. Yeah, and going, zzz, 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 nothing's going on. Okay. So. The setting I would use is probably ISO 200. Yeah. For a sort of clear shot, I would do about f11. But at the moment, I'm on aperture priority. But the lens is on manual focus. So f11, when you get close to something, your depth of field shrinks. F11 is a good quality, it's a good middle of the road aperture, but it also has a bit of depth of field. So. I guess at that sort of distance, depth of field at f11 is going to be about that much or something, isn't it, I suppose? So that means that it's covering the oil on the water. 200 ISO, nice low ISO, so you've got finest granularity, yeah. best colours, and then if you do need to crop into it a bit, because, you know, you don't know what's going to happen with an abstract, do you? That's right. I guess so, it gives you the ability to crop in and... That's right, that's true, so it's, I like to crop them anyway, so... Yeah. Right, now, here comes the best bit, which Go actually on. makes... He is going to munge it up. He's a real oh, chef. Man. Look at that, look. Just give it a good, good swirl round. Yeah. And just wait for the everything to settle and stop moving. And the reason for swiveling it around is to break, break, it. break up the oil. That's where you get your bubble patterns from. Yeah. So hopefully we're going to have a few bubbles yeah. that are going to cross either side of that. You can see that going on. Have a look down in here. As you look straight down onto the card, you can kind of see the the whole thing moving and swirling and those discs of oil. It's so effective, isn't it? I notice you're focusing manually through the viewfinder. Have you got live view on this so camera? Unfortunately not. Oh, um, got no, you. I'm so this is a case of having to, uh, rather than That's a choice right, thing yeah. there. But if, I mean, obviously, if you have live view, you'd, you'd use, use the use back. Use okay, yeah. Really easy. I mean, I must admit, I tend to prefer to do what you're doing, even if I have got live view, simply because where it's optical, I find it clearer and easier to look at than the LCD. But it's, you know, what works for, for you. Well, I think it just about stopped. Let me move my camera back. Yeah, of course. So this is going to give you quite a slow shutter speed, isn't it? Yeah. So it's important to make sure the oil isn't moving, otherwise it'll just blur. There you go. Really? Bagged in one. So we've got a nice oily thing going on there. So if you were to turn the camera slightly, we could then make that line go on a bit of a diagonal, couldn't That's we? Right, yeah. It. If it will fit around there. Oh, yes. <clears throat>
I mean, of course, you could play around for hours doing this kind of stuff. Every shot, because you can change the colour paper as well. Yeah. Because you don't have to stick with this. Yeah. And also, you can swirl it around every single time. And the picture ain't going to be different. It's going to be different every different single time. time, isn't it? And I suppose if you really bash that oil about, you can start to get smaller discs of oil going on. That's right. I'll take another one. But what I love is it's so simple. I'm also intrigued to notice you're doing it with your finger rather than a self timer. Can I just have a look? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? And so you would then come into this and then crop it? Yeah, unfortunately, because um, I can sit at the <coughs> edge of the Pyrex dish, you want to crop that. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll only have a look at your picture and then crop in the middle of your Pyrex yeah. dish. You have a lovely abstract shot of the boiling water. Excellent. I mean, would you also, uh, you could do things like, I guess, putting some dye in the water. Have you ever tried that? Not, but that's a good idea. It's just a it's, thought. That's yeah. it. So. Yeah. So there you go, with a little bit of thought and a little bit of sort of, you know, rummaging around in your cupboards, it's amazing what you could find. This is starting to open up ideas for me. Like, what could you do with flour? You know, if you've got some flour and, and started playing around with that, floating things in water. It's, I think uh, it's limited... Um, it's limitless, it's isn't limitless, it? Limitless, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's just a start, really. Yeah. So, any ideas, just go ahead and try and Yeah, do absolutely. It's endless fun. So, even if you have a dull, wet, kind of a rainy day, it's no excuse to not to get your camera out. You can always practice with these things. And as Nick was saying, he likes to shoot in a manual mode, and it's well worth doing it, particularly when you're doing something like this. Because there's no rush, is there? That's right. You can take as long as you like, fiddle about with it, get it just right. If it's a bit too dark, brighten it up, one thing or another. That's a great little technique, Nick. Yeah. I really appreciate you showing That's us. It. Thanks for your help. I really Thank appreciate you. That's that. That's right, anytime. Cheers.